have a great flat sap to review here today. This is from a Foster Impact Devices made by Todd Foster and it's a model 845. It's a flat sap with a basket weave texture that you're going to see. And this is a heavy hitter. It's kind of medium size in terms of length, but uh, it makes up for that in heft and impact as we'll see later. So take more of a look. It's got a biothane strap, which is very different. First one I've ever owned that has that. As you can tell, just a really killer look with that basket weave, the way it catches the light. Just awesome. Very broad, striking surface, as you can see on this one. It's a hard load, by the way. There's the maker's mark. And yeah, there's just not a flaw to be seen on this sap. I actually got this second hand, too, but from a prodigious collector, uh, and it's in mint condition. Now let's get back to hitting power, and we'll do that by comparing it to my vintage Texan, which, as you probably know, is kind of like the classic of the big boy oversized saps. It's much longer. It's going to have a lot more torque, right? I mean, look at that. Much, much longer. Infamous test. Really does hurt. And the much shorter 845, very, very comparable. Meanwhile, it's going to be a little bit easier to carry. You know, it's less noticeable in a pocket, that kind of a thing. What else can we look at here? It's hard loaded, as we mentioned, but uh, we haven't gotten to the flex yet, so let me show you that here. And it's a fairly rigid flat sap. I think flat saps are my favorite weapon, period, and they're really interesting. So you take this overall shape with that limited degree of flex, and it gives you some interesting possibilities, as we'll see later in the video, without sacrificing too much power in the swing. Now, as I mentioned before, it's got plenty of power. This definitely counts as a heavy hitter, but, you know, the less flexible a sap is, the less freely it swings in a conventional swing, like the kind I just used to uh, hit my hand. So you can see here the thing about the biothane, the synthetic material on the strap, is that it holds its shape, which is really interesting. Obviously, it yields once it goes into a pocket, but that kind of changes things up. Uh, you can see in a lot of my antiques how the leather straps over time, they just completely flatten out. And don't get me wrong, I'm a traditionalist. Obviously, I love the antiques, uh, so I love the leather straps. Uh, but this is this does make sense. It keeps its shape. It's easier to slip your hand into. And importantly for me, though, it didn't have like a it doesn't have like a cheesy synthetic feel. Like it just it feels good, uh, not like leather, but something like that. Anyway, here's one other view. Yep, absolutely love this thing. Really broad-headed, like paddle-shaped saps like this have been a thing for a very long time, uh, but they've never been the predominant outline, which I think is interesting. We'll get into that when we get it to use cases later. So here's how it sits in the pocket, and I'll show you a quick draw that can be had. So you see how the biothane is compressed, but then expands back out outside of the pocket. Very easy slip of the finger. Look completely innocuous when you do it. And that is all you need to instantly haul this heavy-duty flat sap out of the pocket. Let's give it a try. blink of an eye. And if you'll recall, this is one of the cool things about flat saps, the way they just slip into and out of a pocket. So here's from the back. Terrible angle, but it's the best I could do on that day. Now, what I like about a quote-unquote rigid flat sap is that it's the most versatile item in the weapons family, in my opinion. Of course, with a flat sap, you can strike with the flat or the edge, so there's that. But with a rigid one, you can also, depending on you know the size of your hand relative to the, relative to the weapon, grab it like this. And now you've got several striking features you can take advantage of while sacrificing the conventional swing. So let's experiment with that. Hammer fist. High toe, you know, kind of a hook. And thrust. And then, as you know, what I love is, I mean, just by changing the grip, you kind of change weapons, really. I mean, you really, really do, functionally, because now I've got that, a flat versus an edge strike. So slapping and slashing versus sticking, like that. The hook seen here and the thrust feel really good with this one because the weapon can't slip down your hand. Here's kind of typical chopping motion. That also feels great with this one the weapons version of that empty hand strike right there. And right here, just couldn't resist finding a uh, snippet of a movement from Seipai Kata, one of the classical Okinawan forms I do. Anyway, yeah, this thing is uh, great to look at, great to hold, and handle. 
It's a beast for sure. Now, in theory, an extra wide head like that distributes the force of the impact even more, um, but it doesn't feel like it hurts any less when you try it on yourself or feel the power against a heavy bag. But that was, of course, one of the calling cards of flat saps, that broadening effect. So you know, here's how you might strike down. I'm not flexing it all the way, but right. So you got flat versus edge and a jab here, just to show you how thin that profile really is. So it's a serious reduction of striking surface. And then a nasty version of the chop would be this kind of hatchet strike where you're striking with the corner. Yeah. Ouch. Similar to how some stick fighting schools teach you to hit with the tip instead of what you naturally want to hit with, which would be like the baseball bat, you know, type portion striking surface. When used in edge mode, it's interesting because it's kind of a callback to weapons like this. Uh, this is, of course, an antique, uh, the real deal that I got to hold. That's my hand. Uh, so this is a Maori mirror. Right, Jade Club, and also from New Zealand. Uh, it's one of my favorite weapon types. I'll make videos on both of these at some point. Uh, this is also an antique I got to hold. This is a Wahaika made out of whalebone. Anyway, you know, two-dimensional, so to speak, uh, edge-striking clubs uh, have been a thing, but they've always been rare overall. So that's one of the things this particularly broad and heavy and, you know, mostly rigid flat sap calls to mind, and it's the one flat sap I own that I feel like is ideal for that kind of a use, where all the others would be better suited for the conventional sap strike. And yet this one is plenty effective at said typical strike. So, a great piece. I'm glad to uh, own it. Thanks.